I want to first say good afternoon, church, and praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for keeping me and my family and keeping others. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. We will be reading from Psalms 117, 1, 2, 3.
All they got to do is get back on track with me. And whatever you thought you lost, amen, God will renew that and even more. Been there, done that. Did a lot of church hopping. Did a lot of running from the Lord. And every time I church hopped, every time I ran, they left gaps for the enemy to come in. Forgot my mask. Y'all remember the way you pass now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We got to know that we are chosen. He died for us. And if he had not died for us, oh, where would we be? Amen. If you're connected to Jesus Love and Truth Ministry, you are not mediocre. Because I speak life into you. I speak Christ into you. I speak what he's called you to do. Amen for him. Amen. And the more we get into Christ, amen, the smaller our problems become. Amen to that. The more you get into Christ, the smaller your problems will come, become. All the problems I used to have, I barely have them anymore. Amen? Because I'm consumed with the word of God. Amen? You have been chosen. Y'all speak to yourself five times. I'm chosen. Say it again. I'm chosen. Say it to yourself, YouTube and Instagram. I'm chosen. Come on. You got to speak to yourself. I'm chosen. Come on. I'm chosen. I'm chosen. Give the Lord a hand clap on that, y'all. Come on. Praise the Lord up there on uh, YouTube and Instagram. You got to know you're chosen. Because if you forget you're chosen, you'll go back to your own mindset. You'll go back to the way you used to think and the things you used to do. Amen? Amen? No, you chose. And if anybody tell you you're not forget, the Lord said that I'm chosen. It's found in 1 Peter. First one, and keep on reading. That was our first reading. We are a chosen generation. Amen? And as we continue to walk with God, he will begin to ignite your life. The problems you used to have, you ain't got it no more. He'll ignite your life. He'll ignite your children's life. Get on fire for God. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was my warm up. Praise the Lord. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and do our following. Our following. Uh, this, is our, this is our last chapter, y'all. Amen. If you see one, two, and three, and four, go back after the message tonight. Okay, so um, if you're watching, go ahead and turn to Acts 9. This happens to be the final series for Chosen. Amen. We're not going to read all of Acts 9. the verses. Acts 9. Acts 9. Acts 9. Says, While you all are looking for that, let me give you some little background information on Acts 9. For this one, we will say, we, we titled this one Damascus Experience. What is your Damascus experience? Okay, now, Paul was on his way to Damascus to kill the Christians. Amen? To persecute them because they believed in Christ. So this message, we connect that to his journey. And during his journey, he met Christ right there on the road of Damascus. Brother Jeffrey has made it in the house. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You all right, brother? I've been looking. I'm going to hunt you down. Where you been? I was just about to read. Texting you. I was just about to read for you. All right. <laughs> brother, you're looking at that basket right there. Yes, you're right. No, he has a mic. No, he has a mic. I'm sorry. Y'all be calm down. Y'all be moving so fast. Y'all slow down. Anyway. So, that road to Damascus, Paul met Jesus. He blinded him right there. Right there. So uh, this is, a, so what it, does it remind us? Is this, what is your Damascus experience? What experience made you turn to God? This experience made Paul turn to God, y'all. Amen? 
and he actually end up being number one, amen, a true, a true disciple in the Lord. Amen. And see, these experiences are pretty much heavy. So a Damascus experience is you're pretty much it's a pretty much heavy experience, and God is trying to get your attention. So through a lot of struggles and a lot of trials that we keep going back to and having issues in, we call those a Damascus experience. And these experiences are supposed to turn our face to God. So this is what happened to Paul, okay? There are impactful and heavy experiences. You don't ever want to go back once you give your life to God. Once you go through a bad time or a bad experience, you don't ever want to go back. Amen? To the way you used to be. So some people die in their Damascus experience. Never given an opportunity to do great things in God. I always say there are a lot of dead people in the grave. Rich. Because they fell off. They let their life consume them and took them out. And actually that was the enemy. Some people make it through. Some people don't. So what is it that, okay, what is it, what are you going to, okay, what is it going to take, sorry, what is it going to take for God to get your attention in your Damascus experience? Amen. Surrender to his will today. Stick with God. You stick with God by going into places that you know you will find the Holy Ghost. In other words, be before him. Make sure you're getting your Bible study. Amen? And when you're not in Bible study, find some time for him on, during the day. Make sure you're in prayer. Those The conference call that we have once a month. Go in their places. Amen? When you know the Holy Ghost going to be. Amen? Go in the church on Sunday. We can't pack the churches anymore, but go to places that you know he is. Amen? That's the way you surrender your will by being where he is. I be mean, 24 hours in one day, give him some time. Because the more time we give him, the more he'll renew our mind, the more he'll change us. To his image, and the more we'll see that we are chosen. If we don't spend time with him, we won't see it. If we don't spend enough impactful time with him, we won't see it. Mm -mm. The enemy blinded us. He crept, crept in. Paul became radical after his experience and never looked back. Amen? Surrender all to him. So those that's chosen surrender all to him. And they go in places where they know they'll find the Holy Ghost. They don't just be going to churches. Some churches, I don't, you know, maybe don't really preach the word of God. They preach prosperity preaching. And even prosperity preaching do kind of motivate people, but it's not going to save their soul. It's not going to save their soul. It'll motivate them. Because that's what prosperity teaches. You preaching to get something back. But we, when we are in the Lord and we read the word of God and leaders preach the word of God, they can encourage you to remind you that you have been chosen. Paul was chosen. Paul was chosen from the day he was born. Amen. And even though he was out there killing Christians, guess what? He was still chosen. So whatever you're going through, you still got to know that God died for you, you still chose it. But it's up to you to walk in it. It's up to you for it to manifest in your life. And let me tell you, the more you walk in it, if you're sick, that'll fall off. The more you seek them, all of that stuff, it'll fall off. Desires and drugs and alcohol, the more you go deeper in here, chosen generation, yeah. things will fall off. It'll fall off. Live an example. I had a bad report card before I truly accepted the Lord. A bad one. And we all had a bad one before we accepted the Lord. Amen? 
But as we go deeper in him, we'll see what he's called us to do. Praise the Lord, Jeffrey. Acts 9, and we're only going to read Acts 9, 1 through 2. Acts 9, those of you, did anyone put it up there for our listeners? Yeah, I did. I did. Acts 9, 1 through 2. Oh, turn it on. It's on. It's just low. Okay, yeah, yeah. And Saul, yet reading out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. Amen. So Paul threatened. Paul was cussing like a sailor. He was threatening slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. Y'all know what that sounds like. Amen. I'd be scared too. Because I heard Paul had a history for killing him. Persecuting him. That's what he was doing. That's just what he was doing. So as a chosen generation, amen, we're not supposed to be threatening people. Amen. That's not what we're not called to, uh, uh, to breathe out threatenings and slaughter, cuss them out. If we're Christians, amen, and we're called by Christ and we love Christ and we're walking in what he's called us to do, amen, ask the Lord to wash your tongue, amen. Wash it, Lord, help me. Purify me. You died for me. And each time I go that route, it's like a, we're, we're, we're actually killing him again. Amen? So we got to be mindful of the slaughter and the threatenings. That's, those are the things that we do in the flesh. And we forget we're chosen. And then they always say, oh, she, I knew she wasn't saved. And I'm not saying you're not going to make mistakes. I dropped a few bombs myself. I made a mistake. But it wasn't often. It wasn't a lifestyle. And when I dropped that bomb, my kids looked at me like, what where that came from? Y'all, it's a spirit. So if we're a chosen generation, we got to be mindful of our tongue. What we say, we want God to be pleased with him. If we do make the mistake, be big enough to apologize. Those who are chosen, apologize. Be mature enough to apologize to people. And say, I'm sorry. You know, I'm really working out my own salvation. Will you forgive me? Because people need to see God in us. People are looking for God in those who say, quote, unquote, that they are Christians. Comments or questions? Mother's the mic right in that basket. Because you want the people to hear you. Yeah, get the microphone, please. I just want to say that I used to think that I was
He was actually a, a, a temple leader at this time. He was a temple leader, but he hated them. He hated Christian people. And guess what? You still got people right now today who hate Christians. But as the chosen generation, we be the best that we can be so that the person will want or desire the God in you. Do I get an amen on that? Amen. We're the most humbling. We're, we're supposed to be the most humbling type of people. We're called to be the most humbling type of people. Amen? And two, even though he had that rash mouth, he still did some, allowed that order to take place. He called one the permission. Is that what we read? And desired of him letters to the masters. He went to ask for permission to go and bound, to bind them, to bound them. Although he was radical, he still understood order. He needed to ask permission from his leaders to go get them bound. That's a really good point right there, even for us Christians. Amen? Ask permission sometimes. Amen? Ask permission, especially those who are in the household of faith. There is orders. Amen? Ask your, your pastor or your leader. Amen? Ask permission. Amen? If you want to do some things or... <clears throat> If you want to bless some people, I got a call earlier. One of our beautiful sisters, she didn't just go out and do it on the limb. She called and asked permission if she could purchase flowers for the mothers on Mother's Day. So we also, even as um, Christian, even as church folks, we, there's the order. There, there's a way. There's decency and then there's order. But even though he was trying to do something foul, he still asked permission. To do it. Make that the answer. Yeah. He was passionate about it. Passionate. He was real passionate about it. So in other words, you had to please them anyway. Right, but just like how you said, like asking in order, you have to be passionate about the things of God. But you gotta do it the right way. I said just like he was passionate about like he said, like there's a order. And we have to be passionate about the things of God as well. Right. About the order and how God has already ordained, you know, the church and the spirit. Like, like even one of the uh, a while ago, we were talking uh, a Bible study, and uh, Brother Harvey was like, "There's no, there's no forgiveness if you haven't actually if you haven't repented. There's an order of things. You yeah. must first repent, confess, confess, right. confess of what you confess of what you've done, mm -hmm. and that's what forgiveness and repentance means. There's an order to things, Amen. and he showed it, even though he was." Yeah, wrong. <laughs> he was in the wrong, but he was passionate about his mission. He was passionate about what he was going to do, right. what he was going to carry out. He was passionate about his plan. And mm -hmm. as believers, we have to have that same passion for God. Like we were talking, we were on the way to church. He was like, I'm, I'm a, 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 a slave again, but I, I serve the right master. Amen. He served someone good. So we have to have passion in everything that we do in, in order. So the chosen generation definitely have passion for the things of God, amen? And they believe in decency and in order, amen? Brother Jeffrey, the third verse, and that will be it, the third verse. And as he journeyed, he came near the Damascus, and suddenly there shone shine, shine round about him a light of heaven. Oh, go for it now. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? Amen. And you know what? God already knew. Christ already knew why he was persecuting him. Because uh, he knew that Paul hated Christians. He already knew that. Um, but I believe that Christ needed to hear from him. Just like when we repent. He needs to hear. When we confess, he needs to hear that confession. Then follow with confession and repentance. He wanted to hear it. Why? He said, why persecutors not me? So what we have to understand as a chosen generation. Amen. When we persecute, when we persecute others or harming others or cursing others or mean to others, we're hurting the heart of God. 
who are hurting the heart of God. So just like tonight, for those who are chosen, God is saying, why? Why you don't, uh, why are you, why are you faithful in me, you know? Why aren't you praying to me? Why aren't you logging in as often and committed? Why? It's only for our good, amen? But it even goes deeper. When we talk bad about other leaders and we slander them, why per you actually persecuting God. You're hurting the heart of God. Now, I'm not, there's a difference between talking about people and gossip. Sometimes you will speak the truth. But when you call out names, then you gossip and you're talking about people. When you call them names and things like that. Sometimes the leaders are not doing what they're called to do for God's people, for God. And there has to be a time to discuss that. But when you call them outside their name, that's a problem. So we got to be careful with that. So God said, why persecute is me? Why hurt the heart of God when we, why hurt the heart of God when we hurt slash hate on our brother? Even in the body of Christ, when you hurt each other, that hurt the heart of God. This is the kingdom of God. Y'all chosen, amen? And we need to know that. We need to know that we're called to walk in love. We're no among our brethren. Chosen, amen. When you're chosen, you're held to a higher standard. Am I right about that? Amen? amen. Right. You're held to a higher standard. And I'm not saying we're going to drop the ball sometime, but when we do apologize, Lord, help me to see me. Pastor don't have no problem telling me about me when Apollo sticks up. But thank God for the Holy Ghost because it convicts me to line up. Amen, chosen people? Amen. Do I get an amen on YouTube? Amen. Do I get an amen on Instagram? Lord, show me me! Because I don't want to persecute you. Show me me! Show me me, God! Show me me. Because me won't make it in. We'll make it to heaven. We can't keep persecuting God now. Even when we do things to ourselves and we use our body as a sin, sin, as a walk in, as a, in a sinful life, we're persecuting God. Because he's, he says our body does not belong to us. It belongs to God. But don't worry, as you get closer to Christ, amen, he'll convict you, amen, to confess that thing and, him, and to help you look forward, amen? amen? Amen. Amen. We ain't 100, but we can strive to be 100. Verse 8. Okay, are there any comments? Are there any comments before I go to verse 8? Brother Ray, no? No? All right. Verse 8. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, and then led him by the hand, and brought him into Damascus. So y'all know that Paul, in that journey, God allowed him to go blind. First he was going to Damascus for full sight. But guess what? He ended up in Damascus blind. So that's why this, this, this part was called your Damascus experience. What was your Damascus experience that made you look to God? Because after that, Paul ain't never go back. Paul ain't never go back, amen? He never went back to that old life. His own people wanted to kill him and persecute him. The Jews wanted to kill and persecute him. Because he never had an experience like that. For as long he, as he was in Judaism, he never had an experience like that. And that proved that God was real. God was real. Oh my God, I'm persecuting these people. I'm getting a spanking right now. Any, anybody ever had a spanking from God? Come on, get a check mark on that one. Raise your hand if you got a spanking from God. Check mark if you got a spanking from God. 
He got a spanking. So as Christians, as a chosen generation, amen, we want to be able to know God, amen? We want our spiritual eyes open, spiritual eyes aware and alert, amen? And we want to learn from our mistakes. And at the Damascus experience, you want to learn from your mistakes. Don't go back. Comments or questions? Mid I know you got one. It's all in your head with a big old question mark. None? Okay. Don't go back. So just don't go back. Amen? It shouldn't take the enemy to get you down to your lowest degree to wake up. You want to surrender right now. So whatever you in, surrender it right now. Because the enemy is always lurking. He wants to blind you. He wants to blind sight you, side you. He wants to take what God has for you. The plans of God that he's called you to. So he's going to tempt you with the things that has nothing to do with God. That's what he wants to do. But y'all need to say that devil is a liar. Let me hear you say that. Devil, 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 devil. He's a liar and the truth ain't in him. The truth ain't in him. So like whatever it is, God help me. Kick this habit because I don't want to have a Damascus experience with this. Or with a sexual sin or with issues with alcohol or issues with profanity. Amen. I don't, Lord, help me. I don't need another Damascus experience. Because it destroys the plan of God in your life. I was fed up. He wasn't taking no more from me. I lost so many jobs, amen, trying to do things on my own. I lost so much money trying to do things on my own. The enemy was busy in my life. I lost a lot, amen? Always depressed, always low, always issues going on, fighting battles. Issues on top of each other. I'm entertaining it. He drove me through the mud. I had to pinch myself to make sure I was still alive. Accept this sickness in my life, knowing that God hung on the cross for me. Speak to that sickness. I can speak to that sickness. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. You chose it. You chose it. I kind of got lost. Oh, your eyes. Keep your eyes open. Your spirit, your eyes open. Amen. And how you do that? Going into places that you know the Holy Ghost dwells. Go into places where you know God is speaking. Please don't go into these churches that's not speaking the word of God. Be careful of a preacher that don't have a Bible in their hand. That don't read or reference the word of God. Because it'd be, he'll be the Bible. And you yourself go back and reference it. Amen? No comments, questions? We're going to go to 15. Minutes 
So make sure you have your microphone, mother. Make sure Satan does the same thing, you know. Make sure it's turned on. It's not on, I don't think. So I don't think it's on. Oh, I know. So would you call that witchcraft? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Jesus, yes. Okay, I'm not. Mother, mother, give Brother Randy the microphone. Yes, mother, it's witchcraft. Twisting the word. One of my old ministers would call it, I love it, twist theology. <laughs> Twisting the word. One of my old ministers from my ex church. Twist theology. Make sure they got a Bible in their hand, y'all. And the way you reference it, you go back for yourself. You don't eat everything, you spit some of that stuff out. You got to make sure it's from the word of God, Brother Randy. Anybody that's not European white, but what they always lean on is the Bible, and it's twisted for their benefit. Right. You know, they burn crosses, you know, they preach hate, you know, they, they preach, you know, superiority of their race. Um, and that's just one of the things that, um, you know, we've seen right. um, you know, all through history, even as of today. Um, like you said, some people will preach prosperity. Others would preach, you know, superiority like, like the um, Germans. Keep back your in, microphone. Like the Germans back in, like the port, the 1940s. Mm -hmm. um, even you know certain things too, like who's been a race. You know, you know, oh, you're too dark, you're too light, so on and so forth. And people who do it, but you know, that's what I mean. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And. Okay, I was gonna say, what we gotta understand is God, God's gifts is what God will give you. And He tells me we have a lot of things that's not right? And I remember uh, a while ago when I was in my other church, you were saying, like, you know, you have to watch what you say in the spirit and the heart that you say it because you can speak a curse on yourself. Yeah. And that's how easy it changes to which You know, you have life and death in the power of your tongue. Right. And sometimes we take it lightly by the things, the subtle things that we say. We just got to, you know, step back and just, and that's why I say, when you pray, you pray a mess, you got to pray the will of God. The will of God. You got to pray what, what, what God wants you, what, wants you to pray. It's good. Amen? Amen. But you just got to be careful with what your words, and a lot of times people, they don't, they're not careful with their words. But they're spewing out to a congregation is their twisted heart and their wicked, you know, their mm -hmm. mindset. And it's not the word of God, it's them. So Paul was like way deep into that Jewish religion. Right. He, was. he was, it was all about that religion and that alone. But it took the power of God to transform him, form him on that road to Damascus. Sometimes it don't take us, take it that much to happen we get it early. Some people don't. Paul didn't get it. Paul didn't get it. And I believe he was killing Stephen. Rocking Stephen to death. And as he was killing him with the rock, Stephen was praying for him. So, we just got to be mindful. We got to make sure those that who call themselves to be men or women of God, that you see the God in them. That they're using the word of God and they're, they're applying the scriptures according to the word of God, according to the situation. Not twisting it and using it for their advantage, but for God's advantage. And guess what? We kind of know when they're trying to twist it and confuse us. We feel a, a nudge in our spirit, man. Because many of us know, Jeffrey. Brother Jeffrey talking. Um, <laughs> can you give the people on the net and hear like some of the telltale signs that you can tell, like preachers who preaching for the word, or not preaching for the word, like some clues? Give us some. What came to your mind? Like, I mean, like when they would, especially when they talk about it. Because you got a lot of beginners yeah. who are not really strong in the word. And um, they're actually like lamb for me to, to get smarter because they don't know. Right. And a lot of beginners will sit there and put their faith into the 
talking to, to, to the pastor, and they say, well, this person's supposed to leave me, and they don't know the tell to the signs. Like, for right. example, uh, I spoke to a brother who had this other belief, mm -hmm. and um, he had like a lot of hate. And I, and I told him, um, is it God is love, right? right? He said, yeah, but there's no love in your belief. There's a lot of hate, so therefore God is not in it. Right. And then I'm able to cry tell to us signs for beginners to pinpoint uh, so they can see well this is the right leader to naive instead of just you know being lost to the moon. I call it cult right. cult, cult. Cult. Like that. Well I know one of them is when you're when you're doing your offering and giving. They'll tell you all kinds of stuff to make you fear if you don't tie this is gonna happen and that's gonna happen. And they put fear in a lot of people. God said, give as you're led. If you want to do 10%, that's fine. If not, give as you led. That's a, that's a, that's, giving is a part of worship. So a lot of times they kind of make people feel so scared that they're cursed and all that kind of stuff. Actually, they didn't curse back in when we did the study on that. They actually cursed the, the food or something like that, right? Did that when we did that study on giving and stuff like that? Yeah, it was food that was cursed. The food, and not not money. Guess what? Because guess what? God wants us to be faithful steward of His money. You pray about it, honey. Pay your bills. Pray about it, and let the Lord lead you. However, it leads you, it's fine with Him. People get scared. Oh, I gotta get, or they just giving and living all kinds of ways. So we just gotta be careful with that. What about some other good one? You're in the church, and they don't talk against sin. They never think about, oh, you got to do yourself with this sin, that sin. It's all about encouragement, prosperity. And they don't talk about hell. They don't talk about Holy Spirit. It's all motivation or speaking. That's another sign that I'm not at the right church. That's another sign. You said it right. Prosperity preaching, it'll probably help you in life, but it won't save your soul. And if they don't talk about sin, they you in trouble. Find you a person that loves God right away. Find you a person that preaches the word of God right away. The word of God is all about sin and how we need to come against it. That's the Every way you read it is about coming against sin and those issues in our bodies. We can't get to heaven if we stay in our sinful life. So even as a chosen pink person, as I connect this to what we just discussed, you have to understand, be led. Give us a part of worship. Be led. Let the Lord lead you, honey. One dollar stretch a long way. Pay your bills. He wants you to be good stewards over your giving. Amen? Trust God. I had to trust God. I had to trust God. So we definitely, it was the second thing when you were saying about sin. That's real. Sin will destroy us. So many people got sickness in their body, like we were studying on Sunday. Sickness in their body because of sin and sinful life. Alcohol will destroy your liver. You know, I see you, mother. I get you in a moment. It will destroy your liver. Sex, you end up with all kinds of bad and infectious diseases. We got to, and the more we read the word, the less we would desire those things. And the more we in church and get the word, the less we desire these things. The more we praise, we desire God and his word. Mother. No, God hears the sinner's prayer. He hears the sinner's prayer with for him. But it's just that it, your blessings are on hold. No, not. Do not. Do not. Mm -hmm. You say he'll laugh at your iniquity or something like that. So we got to be mindful. So we're going to go ahead and close. Go ahead, Adam. I just want to say another point. Uh, it's just the proof that they bear. And I feel like it's very important because it may not happen right away. Yeah. You know? But I believe it's not that God will. Um, reveal it in time. Um, and sometimes you never know, they need to be under that leadership to know what not to do. Right. You know, and so you are, you know, recognized by the proof that you did. And if you're somewhere 
and God is reaching for your soul, it's my belief that He will. He He's a He's amazing in trying to move you where you need to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I said it right. Because but, you're listening to Him and you're hearing Him, so He'll definitely lead you and guide you to where He wants you to be but in also, a church. But yeah. also, like I know, like a while ago, I was there was a pastor. And he He kept on cheating on his wife, and he did not want to sit down. And I was talking to one of his, uh, he used to go to the church, and I said, you don't find a problem with that? And he was comfortable enough to stay there knowing that the pastor had no repentance. You know, he kept doing it, and kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. And so, for me, that just moves me the wrong way. Like, you're old married. You're married. And how God put him on blast and how everyone found out. And it was just nothing but the Holy Spirit where he got caught. And so their fruit, what they, what, what, what they, going on with this line, you know, their fruit will bear with Something going on with the line. Let Alicia do it. I think she knows she be ready. Your little hands be shaking it. If I have to beg, yo. <laughs> Go ahead. And honestly, I just feel like there'll be no time wasted. No time wasted. Because people learn and people, you know, learn to forget. And, you know, I feel like God will reveal, especially like the new ones and the people that aren't really able to. God will put someone, a random or someone to talk to. You never yeah. know how God will. He'll lead you, because God, He knows your heart. So as we're chosen, we have to read. That's why I said we have to go back and we got to reference the word of God for ourselves. And He'll lead us on how to respond to people that do not really live out His word. Amen. He, you know, he, he'll help you. So the last verse to ask for, um, for, for this chapter is 20. Um, read that last one, because Paul was on fire by the time his Damascus experience. Amen. Read that last one. And straight away, and straight away he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. So y'all have to get this chosen generation. 20. Get that. As a chosen generation, you have no problem sharing the gospel. Now, he's not saying throw it all among and everybody else. And sometimes people look at that as an issue when um, they radical. And it kind of make people uncomfortable when you're too radical. And they don't really know. So, God wants us to really be in tune with the Holy Ghost. He'll tell us how to share it. So, if you're a chosen generation, you got to really be connected to God and sharing the gospel. Like some people, I'm, I'll be gentle as a, as a kid. But some people, get it together! Gotta tell you how to do it. No, no, no. Not the H E L L word. That, that, that way. They got you, they got you, they heard it all. Man. So we got to understand. We gotta understand God will lead us and guide us because straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Christ Jesus is the Son of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. A special Amen. son he is. Amen. 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 So last one, go ahead, Damon. So and that's so that's, that's just, God just knows how to reach you. Yeah. He knows how to reach each and every one of us yeah. in our own specific way. I'm yeah. reading this this little passage. This lady, she she was getting close to God, and she was oh, she was always busy. It was just once she was looking at a rainbow, and she was like, "I knew this is a sign of God." She just knew it, you know. And so God just knows how to reach His children. Right. He knows how to give them what they need to get, what they need, where they need. To get. But they gotta keep seeking too, too. Also, they also gotta keep seeking. But God has a way. So that Damascus experience. It's supposed to draw us closer to God. Amen, chosen generation? Yes. Bring us closer to God to learn His word, to surrender all. Mother, one more co last comment. We got to go to the next part because we got to finish out. Oh, okay. They say, they say, keep your mind on Jesus. Keep your mind on Jesus. Mother said, keep your mind on Jesus, you do. <laughs> Instagram, keep your mind on Jesus. And we got to, because if we don't keep our mind on, on Christ Jesus, the enemy will take us left. It'll make us fearful instead of fearless. 
Amen. If we will need to have hope. Instead of being having hope, we'll be hopeless instead of hopeful. Knowing that even through this time and season that we're dealing with, God's going to need to get something out of us in this. Some of us are dealing in that the master experience right now as a speak. Because we kind of like trying to figure out what's going on when we never really experienced anything like this. So come on, those who experience the mass experience, y'all better say, I'm breaking through. Come on, y'all. Y'all type that. I'm breaking through in my Damascus experience. Come on, I'm breaking through in my Damascus experience. Amen. I ain't going back. So as a chosen person, you got to break through and keep going in God. Praise the Lord. We don't really have any verses for Genesis. Then our second um our second um, teaching was on Genesis 22, where um, Isaac, what's his daddy's name? Oh. Abraham. It was Abraham and Isaac. And guys, I want you to remember that God did promise Abraham, amen, descendants as much as the stars, right? And Abraham remembered this. He remembered this as he went forward to sacrifice his son. So for this, the second series, the second part of the chosen generation, the title of that one was called Paradox Faith. Paradox Faith. And I'm going to read you a few notes. And if for Paradox Faith, we cannot have any other gods before God. Amen? Amen. God will mess that thing up. I know y'all. Now I know God will mess up a few relationships. Because we done made him, made them their God. We also got to walk in obedience, amen, even when we don't understand it. And most important about that is we got to learn to fall back on what we already know. Amen? Did you, okay, did for you when you faced the test. Abraham was tested. But Abraham kept moving in God. And he kept moving in God, remembering what God promised him. That thing freezing up just a little bit. It says, your connection is what? It's fine. Abraham kept moving in spite of him. Paradox faith says what? Lord, you promised me this, but look what's, what's before me. This is what's before me, God. I know what you promised me. And you're telling me to do what? Sacrifice my son? Paradox Because you know what God promised you, but he asked you to do something actually uh, against what he's promised you. So paradox faith says, keep moving in God, chosen people. Yeah. Fall back on what you know. He's bought you out a whole lot of stuff. He's bought you out of sickness. He's bought you out of poverty. You got some people doing way worse off than you. You got to trust God all the way. And guess what? Whatever you're going through now, he's bringing you out now. Because you're hearing the word of God. He's bringing you out now because you're hearing the word of God. So we got to fall back on what we already know. And if you keep flunking the same test, you're going to have to keep taking it over and over and over again. If you keep saying, I ain't going to do it no more. God, I ain't going to do it no more. But you do it again, you're going to have to take the same test again. But just know it's coming against what God has called you to do. It's taking, taking you away from him. So those who are chosen must know you got to learn to pass those tests. And those tests are things that you're doing to your body in your body. That's harming your body. And that's hurting your relationship with God. Amen? Amen? Don't wallow in doubt. What is God telling you in this time? Whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, what is he telling you in this time? And put your obedience above your understanding. Just obey God. God said, I called you to preach the word. Obey! Obey! Put your obedience above your understanding. Because the way you looking at it one way, but God sees it in another. Those who are chosen. Obey God. 
Any comments about the story of Abraham and Isaac? No comments? Get the microphone, Brother Randy. I feel like I'm singing that. Get the microphone. Get the microphone. Get the microphone. Um, get the microphone. Get the microphone! Just to, just, just to clarify, a Go par ahead. paradox is unwavering, right? Or is it parallel or um, it, it con it, Paradox means it, con it contradicts what you, what you see before you. In other words, God promised it to you, but he told you to sacrifice. So like unwavering, it, unwavering, of unwavering type of faith. Define unwavering, what do you mean? Unwavering, like, you know, faith that's in and out, you know, it's like strong, consistent faith. Right? I wouldn't use it that way. Okay. Right? No, hold on, let that make sense. Paradox, it's, it's like the scripture, Hebrews 11. Now faith, now faith is such a thing hoped for. You cannot see it, right? Okay. It's prophecy, but you can't see it. Okay. Right. But you still believe it. You right. know it's coming. And yeah. when it comes, God says sacrifice. So a strong, you still have to have so a strong the, faith. Yeah, you still have to have the faith to, to, to believe in who he says he is and believe the promise that he gave you. Having faith in a sight of where you're not supposed to have faith. Like in a good way. Right? Like when just having faith because he promised it to you. That's like it. when like odds are against you, still having faith that something. Right, right. Okay. Even though he told you to sacrifice. For a good example, you dating somebody. And it's going well, but it's not going according to the standards of God. And God done promised you a husband, or he done promised you a wife, but God said, give him up. Oh, last question was the verses. The verses, so I can put it on another thing. The verses? Oh, I need you verses in a moment. Hold on, let me finish this. I want to make a connection here so people understand. Oh, he done promised you Romeo. <laughs> he done promised you Mr. Romeo. And God said, girl, you gonna be married, don't worry. Y'all dating, things going well, according to y'all two. But God is not pleased with the relationship. He says, give him up. What? Chosen people, you gotta obey, obey, obey. And you gotta put obedience above understanding. We got to. Or the Lord says, you've been given one dollar for offering for the whole year. And I don't promise you to be a millionaire. This service, give a hundred. What? But he's promised you to be a millionaire. He promised that. So if he's already promised that to you, we kind of have to understand that when he asks you to sacrifice something, it's for your good. Now, although Isaac was not sacrificed on the altar, on the altar anymore, God stopped him. But guess what? God had full recognition of what was going on because God stopped him. So when you have that paradox faith when God promised you something and he tell you to sacrifice it, sacrifice it. Obey him. Put your obedience above understanding. My brother, brother Jeffrey, you had a comment? So as chosen generation, you got to keep walking in that paradigm state and fall back on what you know. Brother Jeffrey. I thought that comment when he said, you probably should find that person and get that person that is going good to find that person and then you got to give it up. And I have an issue where it's like, I didn't want to. And I could see by like my head was hurting. I was like, no. It was to the point that it was like I was fighting. Right? God said, hey, talk about. When I woke up, I had like a headache. I was being stubborn. And then God knew I was not going to do it. So you know that person to do it. Yeah, I was like, no, but this is this is so it does happen. And um, I think sometimes we just misread things. And sometimes we want something, we think it's it, and God is like, I've been showing you like that it's a preview, that's not it. And we fall the world with temporary and God is saying that's not the one because you got the, the real one coming up. It's like a building block. Mm -hmm. you know, that will give it to you just like that. Just train you up. Like 
said, give a dollar. Give a hundred. Mm -hmm. I ain't like, no, I don't give a hundred. <laughs> but God's holding that big payday right there. And you got to have faith in the hope. Right. So that's just important. Go ahead, Mother. I just wanted to ask you, what if you dream that you, brought, you, you became a millionaire? You dreamed it? Yeah. Just oh, praise God. Know. Hallelujah. I dreamed it, but it been some years ago, like about 10, 12 yeah. You still God, you still alive. There's still possibility for God to do it. What is possibility for God to do it? So he, I mean, he showed me, uh, he showed me so many things. But actually, before the church opened, he showed us the church. He didn't show, he didn't show us this church. He showed me the 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 the, the biggest sanctuary. And he showed us, showed me, not us. He showed me a whole bunch of people, thousands and thousands of people. But when we first opened the ministry, there were one and two was the one the land. So I know he promised. I know he showed me he promised. So my paradox kicked in because I know he uh, promised me. So he may tell me I have to sacrifice my time. I may have to call and reach out and do all these things. They meant to help grow the ministry. So steps, like Brother Jeffrey said. Amen? So got to fall back on what we know, um, chosen people. Stay before the Lord. Know him. Receive him. Believe him. Strive. Strive to renew your mind every day. Because he's called you to do something for him. He ain't called you just to know every day, day-to-day -day job. He's called you for his kingdom. For his kingdom. Amen? Your job is about you. But God's work is about him. And he'll begin to do something mighty, mighty big in your family. Amen? Amen. Final one. John 19. Randy, put John 19. Oh, you wanted the first one too, right, Randy? Yeah. And that was... um. Genesis something, right? It was Genesis 22. Oh. You want to go back and read? Go to Genesis 22 and 1. You can read the whole book. That was all about um, Abraham and sacrificing his son. And what's the next one? The next one. The final one. Amen. Real quick. The final uh, teaching um, for the chosen generation title was, Who is your king? <laughs> who is your king? In other words, who are you listening to? Who do you always listen to? And they taking you left. Ain't got nothing to do with God in it. Who is your king? Is your husband your king? Your boyfriend, your girlfriend your king? Is Trump your king? Is Barack Obama your king? That's who you listen to all the time? God wants to be your king. So as a chosen generation, we, we seek God. We look to God. He's our king. So we actually studied the story of Pilate and the crucifixion of Christ for this um, for this study. Because the Jews, quote unquote, have nothing against them. There's a whole different Jews these days. I'm not I'm talking about those back in the past that was hateful, envious, and jealous, and then they saw all the miraculous work that Jesus Christ did and still wanted them nailed to the cross. So instead of them listening and knowing him, Christ Jesus being the Savior, they listened to the Roman, what's the man name? Who was the man they listened to? Um, the pilot. The pilot. <laughs> they said, Pilot was their king. Caesar. Caesar was their king. Thank you. So that's who they listened to when they're supposed to be Christian. They're supposed to be saved people. Pilate was the governor. Caesar was the king. So that's who the Jews listen to. So who do you listen to? Who's leading you? Who's guiding you? Because if God leading and guiding you, you'll know his voice. Amen? You will know him. You'll be driven to be before him. You'll be driven to come to Bible study. You'll be driven. Hallelujah to log in. You'll be driven for prayer. <laughs> Amen. 
Because if he's your king, you're where he is. And if he's your king, those who are chosen, you're rooted. Amen? You're rooted and grounded in a sanctuary that preached the word of God. Those who are chosen. So that was our final one. Who is your king? Mother, you have something to say? What? You're distracting me, mother. <laughs> I see your little hands flopping up. <laughs> she, she knows she, grandma. She knows. I know, mother. So we just truly thank God for this series. I encourage you, those who are watching, go back and look at the Chosen series. Because after this series, you're not going to come out the same. Brother Jeffrey ain't the same. But when Brother Jeffrey said he's going to start doing announcements next month in the name of Jesus. Woo! Woo! And this is all happening during the series. Brother Jeffrey said, I read, amen, in the name of Jesus for um, son, um, um, Bible study. Because when you hear the blessings that God has for you, you'll stay before him. You'll do what he's called you to do. Amen? And you will know your king. Amen. You'll know the voice of your father. You don't side with darkness. You side with lightness. You renew your mind all the time. Because if you don't renew your mind all the time, guess what's going to happen? You will be listening to the wrong king. You're going to be listening to the wrong king. And everything you do read and hear, I ask you guys, please reference the Bible. Brother Randy is going to post all of the scriptures up for tonight and all of the other scriptures. Go back and read it. Fill up on it. And God is going to bless you in a mighty way. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm looking for that song. Because that was his most perfect song for this series. Perfect song for the series. Mm. <laughs> Please stand to you.
Jesus Love Truth. You can also go ahead and mail it in. We do have a um, new mailing address, which is 2040 Dewey Street, Hollywood, Florida, 33020. Again, you can mail it in at 2040 Dewey Street, Hollywood, Florida, 33020. Right. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over. Give, it will come back to you. When you give, it gets to the Lord. Oh, give, and it will come back.
share the word of God, share Jesus, amen? amen. As well as, um, there's one more thing I have to say. <laughs> Keep your mask, I don't know what it is, it, it left. But share, share the gospel, share on the platforms and things like that. Um, don't forget our fundraiser project, Blue Change. If you do have any quarters, nickels, dimes, or any spare change that you want to give to the church, the bucket is in the back. Um, oh, that's what I was saying. Prayer. If you need prayer, contact the church's line. The number seven five four five eight one zero eight six five. If you need prayer requests, text it or call it. It is a direct line to pastors. It's a direct line to to people that's going to pray for you. Okay. So if you need prayer on anything, feel free to come. Don't be shy. Don't be ashamed. It's your church. You need prayer. Everybody needs prayer. Amen. Text it. Text it. Text it. Amen? Amen. And I believe that's all that's anymore. Go ahead and welcome Sister Erica Hernandez, Sister oh. Olivia. So, but we welcome Sister Erica Hernandez. Welcome. I saw you logging on YouTube. Welcome, Sister Hernandez. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Sister Olivia. Welcome, Sister Olivia Bruton. Praise the Lord. Amen.